Hello, traders. It is Thursday, May 11th. This is the Silver Bullet Trade Review. And as I mentioned in my last video, I'm going to attempt to be more methodical on this and not show every possible entry, but yet try to locate the best entries and this, what was occurring in price action to lead up to that in hopes of finding um, more consistent entries and a more methodical, laid out trade approach to the silver bullet. So let's take a look at the process. So I personally am a fan of SMT divergence. I know if you listen to ICT, he says it is not the holy grail of trading. And I would completely agree. It would never argue with him. But I think if you use SMT divergence in conjunction with dollar, it can tell you an interesting story. So 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock is the AM session silver bullet. And what we see is we have SMT divergence at 1040. Because we're we make this lower low here, whereas we're making higher lows here. So at the ten, close of that 1040 candle, we have not pierced the lows where we did on NQ. We also did not pierce the lows on YM. What was dollar doing? Well, dollar was making lower lows. If you look at this five minute chart, because we're comparing right now the five minute to the five minute, dollar keeps making lower lows, breaking the lows. So as if dollar is getting weaker, we should expect ES to gain strength. And this SMT is going to give us some insight as to what I believe was the better trade for the AM session. So let's drill down to the one minute chart. Now on that one minute chart, the SMT occurred at the 1040 candle. So it was the close of that candle that the SMT would have triggered me to look at the lower time frame of the one minute chart. So the 1040 candle closes at 1045. So as you can see, I have a couple levels marked up between the 10 and 11 o'clock time frames. I have this fair value gap where price had come into it. And at 1045, that would be this 1044 candle. When it closes, it's, it's 1045 right here on this candle. So what happened? Price came down into a fair value gap. It respected the lows. It respected the order blocks. So we have quite a bit of confluence right here, not to mention the SMT divergence. And we had the dollar weakness. Again, you can see the dollar over here. So what I would submit to you is that inside of this fair value gap is a perfect place to enter the trade. If you were just looking at this on a one minute chart and you saw the up run and then price come down, you may have wanted to enter right here. And that would have been valid. Five point stop loss, you, you don't get stopped out and that would have been fine. But I'm trying to build a checklist, if you will, so that I can be more methodical in my approach to these setups. So going back to mine, setup I'm identifying here is we had the SMT divergence, we had dollar weakening, we dropped down to the one minute chart, and what we see is there was a fair value gap in price. All it did was fully rebalance by, well, it hasn't rebalanced yet. It came, it's rebalanced, ICT says, once it fully comes out of it. But price has come all the way down into the fair value gap, we have the sport that I've already mentioned. And at this point, we're right in the middle of the fair value gap. At this point, I would have been comfortable going along here, setting my stop right below there. So a three point stop loss. And of course, if you're going for the five, you get it no problem. If you want to go a little further by looking at the more recent swing levels, you've got this swing high, which is almost seven points away. And you have this swing level, which is 12 points away. So there's a couple of ways you can structure it. If you have multiple contracts, you can scale one off at five. You can have another one run for uh, the next swing level. And then if that's being met, um, you can go for the next level. So there's, that's a couple of different ways that you can look at that. But again, I believe this was the better setup. You also might be looking back and say, well, what about this one? There was a fair value gap because you've seen probably a lot of my previous videos and I talk about extending fair value gaps over. And prior to that SMT divergence, what we saw was price come into this fair value gap and then start to break down. 
absolutely would have been totally legitimate um, to go for that short. If you wanted to use this as your anchoring point, you would have got it. Obviously, no problem. But again, I'm trying to look for a little bit clearer trades using a process that I can repeat every single day. So that is the AM session. Let's look at the PM session. All right, going to the PM session. I'm going to start on a 15 minute chart for this on the SMT just because it's easier to see, but then we'll look at it on the five minutes so you can see it there as well. What we can see is NQ between these two 15 minute candles made a higher low, whereas YM, uh, YM down here and ES made lower lows. Let's look at it on the five minute. A little different to be able to see it here. Basically, you're looking at this bearish candle swing low, or not, I know it's not a swing, but it's low, and these candles lows, they're, they're higher. Whereas if you look at this bearish candle's low, it gets broken here, and this bearish candle here gets broken here. So basically, the down, the down candle here on the 15 minute, when you drill down to the five minute, that bearish candle gets broken on these two instruments, but not on MQ. So we have SMT divergence. So now we can look, what is dollar doing? Dollar made, prior to that, made a lower low. So while this was a bullish run, it failed to make a higher high. So at just before two o'clock, we had a little bit of consolidation. Then we have an impulse candle down, breaking structure right here. And then some inside bars, couldn't break out. And all the price action stayed inside of here till it continued to drop lower. So is this the cleanest dollar price action? It is not. <laughs> Absolutely, it is not. But because it failed to take out this high, I'm leaning still more bearish because it, it couldn't take out the high. So now let's look at the one minute chart at the 225 time frame because it's the close of that 220 candle that we would then want to drill down to the one minute chart. Drilling down to that one minute time frame, this candle, that's, uh, or excuse me, the close of this candle, that is the 225 time frame. I mean, what does it leave behind? It leaves behind a fair value gap. Right there. Let's make that green. And two minutes later, price dips into that and then goes higher, getting you your five points, no problem. And similarly, if you start looking at levels that you might want to target, besides the five, your five points is just above that swing level, and these are pretty equal highs. And then we have some pretty equal highs here, along with that swing high. All of those prices are met in that price action. Excuse me. So again, while there may have been a lot more trades that you could have identified in this price action yourself. Maybe uh, let me get rid of this vertical line, see if there's something there. Yeah, here, here's a fair value gap right here. This dips into it. Maybe that was your trade just because you saw price already came down to a point that you determined liquidity had been taken and now is reversing. By all means, there are more than one trades generally in these in this time period. But at the risk of sounding like a broken record, we're trying to create a, a process for looking at this that's more methodical, more repeatable, and that I can actually share with the community in hopes of improving everyone's trading. So traders, I hope this was helpful. Leave me a like, leave me a comment, give me some advice. Do you like this type of um, evaluation where I'm just looking at the best setups or do you like it when I show you everyone that's there? Let me know in the comment section. Hey, traders, this is another thing that I realized after the fact. Um, and I guess this just goes to show how hard this can be is it is like looking at an instrument panel of an airplane cockpit, but maybe not so bad. Then we also had SMT divergence, right? At the early part of the silver bullet trading session, and I just had overlooked it making the video. So I wanted to plug this in there as a placeholder. So you can see we had higher highs on NQ and this swing to that swing, whereas we had lower highs here and lower highs here. So that, along with what was Dollar doing, 
At that time, dollar was still showing strength, even though we have this one pullback. I would call it dollar weak just because we have a pullback. Dollar was strong until it had its own shift in structure and started showing weakness. So let's see what was happening again, even though I think we covered this briefly in the video. Let's just take a second look at it. Okay, so that, that S&T divergence was at 1025, which is 1030 when it closes. And what we would have seen is that fair value gap that we looked at earlier that I said probably wasn't the best trade, but again, in hindsight, Wow, it was, uh, it was a good trade. A couple things that we had as far as confluence. We had this fair value gap being supported. And then once we had the 1030 candle close and then open, what did we have? We had a volume imbalance. And then we see these wicks just coming in there and holding. So at this point, even though we didn't come back into this fair value gap, if you're still waiting for the S&T divergence, like I'm trying to do, along with then the dollar to, to validate it, if you would have sold in here inside this volume imbalance, as already noted, you could get the five points. Now, if you were shooting for this swing low, you would have you would have never gotten it. But we did get that other S&T divergence noted. And so at this point, once you saw that, you could have exited the trade, still got your five points, and then reversed your position for the long. So just goes to show there's a lot to keep in track of in the in the heat of the moment, um, obviously it's always easier to look at this stuff in hindsight, but clearly you can see I missed it in hindsight, the first pass. So uh, this stuff you can miss in real time, but hopefully the more we look at these charts, we start to train our eyes to look for the stuff in advance and uh, get quicker um, identifying it and then executing on the trade ideas. Traders, I hope you took more from the market than it took from you. May the ticks be forever in your favor. Peace out.